Hey everyone, today I will tell you about a mysterious thriller directed by James Wan and released in July 2013. It is The Conjuring. The film is based on the actual case. The Perrin family moves into a new farmhouse only to discover an evil presence plagues it. As paranormal activity escalates and their youngest daughter becomes the target, the Perrins call upon Ed and Lorraine Warren for help. The Warrens uncover a horrifying story connected to the house and must use all their experience to fight the evil entity before it consumes the family. Will the Warrens be able to cleanse the house and save the Perrin family? Okay, without further ado, let's dive into the recap and discover the truth together. In 1971, the Perrin family moved to a new home in Harrisville, Rhode Island. The younger children are excited, but the eldest daughter is not. Their dog refuses to enter the house. As they unpack, Cindy brings a wind chime to the porch and calls April, who shows her a music box found in the yard. That night, the girls play hide and clap. Christine, blindfolded, searches for them. Cindy cheats, leading Christine to find Nancy, who breaks something. Roger investigates and discovers a boarded-up cellar. He lights a match, explores, finds old items, and warns the girls to stay out. The next morning, Carolyn wakes up, greeting the kids. Andre complains of an awful smell in her room. Carolyn notices the clock stopped at 3.07. She finds Roger in the cellar, setting up a light. He thinks some antiques might be valuable. While Roger works on the furnace, Carolyn makes coffee and finds another clock stopped at the same time position. April searches for their dog outside. Moments later, the parents hear April scream and find the dog dead. Meanwhile, Ed shows a reporter their collection of haunted items. The reporter asks if it's safer to keep them rather than destroy them, and Ed explains that it's better to contain what might be inside. Ed takes him to see the Annabelle doll. The reporter inquires how they prevent entities from attaching to them, and Ed says they take extraordinary precautions. Suddenly, there's a crack, and Ed finds his daughter Judy has sneaked in. He scolds her, reminding her she is forbidden in the room. The girls are sleeping at the farmhouse when Christine feels someone grabbing her foot. Roger wakes up at the desk, hears noises, and follows them to the kitchen. He finds Andrea on the stairs, who tells him Cindy is sleepwalking. They see Cindy banging her head on the wardrobe and gently taking her back to bed. The next day, Roger tells Carolyn about Cindy sleepwalking and notices another bruise on her. She doesn't know where it came from, and he suggests seeing a doctor. As Roger leaves, he hears a bird slam into the house and dies. Later, Carolyn sends the girls to school and checks on April, who is talking to someone who isn't there. April says she's talking to Rory, her new friend, and gives Carolyn the music box. She explains that playing the music box will show Rory in the mirror. Carolyn gets interested and seems to see something, but April scares her. April then begs Carolyn to play hide and clap. Carolyn counts down and starts looking for April. She hears claps leading her to Andrea's room. She hears breathing from the wardrobe, but then hears April running outside, leaving Carolyn confused. That night, Roger returns home, gets a job call, and they go to bed. Christine is grabbed and dragged down the bed while sleeping. She sees her sister in the other bed and checks under her own. The bedroom door creaks and Christine sees something next to it. She wakes Nancy, who sees nothing, but Christine insists something is behind her. Suddenly, the door slams and Christine screams. The parents rush in, but see no one. Christine says the entity wants her family dead. One night, Carolyn folds laundry and hears clapping. She checks on the girls, but they are all sleeping. When she checks in April, she hears children's laughter and photos falling from the walls fearfully. Carolyn goes downstairs, and the clock chimes three times. She hears clapping again and investigates. Suddenly, the piano in the basement starts playing. Carolyn enters and threatens to lock the door, but it slams shut, sending her down the stairs. A ball falls from the wall and the light bulb shatters. Carolyn strikes a match shakingly and hears someone ask if she wants to play hide and clap. Suddenly, a clap sounded next to her. Meanwhile, Cindy is banging her head on the wardrobe in Andrea's room. Andrea gets her to bed, but the banging continues. Andrea cautiously opens the wardrobe, waking Cindy. A creature appears and jumps on Andrea. Roger returns home, hears screaming, rescues Carolyn from the cellar, and finds Andrea screaming on the floor. The Warrens give a lecture on demonic possession, explaining the stages, infestation, 
oppression, and possession. Carolyn attends and asks the Warrens to investigate her house, fearing for her daughters. Lorraine agrees. The Warrens arrive at the farmhouse, meet the family, and learn they all sleep in the living room because the girls feel safer. Carolyn describes a rotting meat smell that moves around the house. Ed explains this could indicate demonic activity. He checks a locked door and Roger says it bangs in three sets all night if left unlocked. Carolyn mentions the clock stop every night at 3.07 a.m. and they stopped hanging photos because they kept falling. The wardrobe and cellar items were already there when they moved in. Lorraine asks to see the cellar and senses something awful happened there. Ed interviews the couple and asks why they don't move out. They explain that all their money is tied up in the house. Ed records Carolyn as she describes the haunting. Lorraine talks to April about Rory, who is always sad. April gives Lorraine the music box to see Rory. Lorraine sees the boy and walks to the tree by the lake with Ed. She sees someone hanging over Ed's head and almost faints. Back at the house, Roger and Carolyn admit they don't know who lived there before. Lorraine tells them there are many spirits, but one entity is the worst. Exorcisms require extensive evidence, which they need to gather. The Warrens advise Roger and Carolyn to baptize their daughters for protection and promise to research the property's history. Back home, Judy gives Lorraine a locket with her picture, expressing she misses her parents. Later, Ed reveals Carolyn's voice didn't record and plays the tape. Lorraine explains the house's history. It was built in 1863 by a man married to Bathsheba, who was related to a woman hung for witchcraft. Bathsheba sacrificed her child, professed love for Satan, cursed the land, and hung herself at 3.07 a.m. Another resident's child, Rory, disappeared, and she killed herself in the cellar. Many deaths occurred on the property. Suddenly, the tape plays by itself, revealing a ghastly voice recorded at 3.07 a.m. The next day, the Warrens arrive with Drew and Officer Brad, setting up ghost hunting equipment. Ed, Roger, and Drew set up a camera with a thermostat switch at 3.07. Roger asks if they've caught anything on film, and Ed shares about the witch who killed herself above where they're standing. Lorraine tells Carolyn that witches believed killing their baby brought them closer to Satan. Ed and Drew check the equipment that night, placing crosses and holy water around the house to provoke the entities. The door creaks open, and the camera snaps a photo. Ed, Lorraine, and Brad go to the cellar, asking the entity to communicate. Ed records the sounds while Lorraine feels sick, sensing a presence. They leave, and the door slams shut, scaring Brad. The following day, Lorraine and Ed discuss the family and their desire to help. Suddenly, a storm brews and a wind-blown sheet reveals an entity. Lorraine sees it in the house above Carolyn, who is sleeping. Another bruise appears on Carolyn's arm, and the entity vomits into her mouth. Lorraine tries to reach Carolyn, but she lies about nothing happening. Roger and the girls return, finding Ed fixing his car. Roger thanks Ed, admitting he was skeptical. Ed explains he didn't want to come because sensing entities tolls Lorraine. He recounts a past case that disturbed her so much she locked herself away for eight days, never revealing what she saw. That night, everything is set up, and they begin the wait. Brad goes to the kitchen for coffee, hears, look what she made me do, and sees a ghost on the porch. It attacks him, and he screams for Ed. Everyone rushes to him as he recounts what he saw. Cindy triggers a trap, and Ed warns Roger not to touch her. Cindy enters Andrea's room, and the door slams shut. Drew hears someone telling Cindy to follow them, the men open the door, but can't find her. Brad uses a UV light to follow her footsteps to the wardrobe, discovering a trap door. They find and rescue Cindy. April tells Lorraine that Rory hides there when scared. Lorraine crawls inside and finds Rory's storage. She places the music box and finds a rope, pulling out a noose. Suddenly, she drops through the walls into the cellar. Ed freaks out and runs to find her. Lorraine hears laughter turning into cries and a woman saying she was made to kill him. The entity appears, repeating the words, and Lorraine sees the witch hanging herself. The witch chases Lorraine, grabbing her necklace, but Ed opens the cellar door. Lorraine realizes the witch possesses mothers to kill their children and is feeding off Carolyn. Suddenly, something grabs Nancy and drags her until Lorraine cuts off her hair. The next day, they storm out, and Ed tells Roger they have enough evidence for an exorcism. He'll return with a priest, but without Lorraine. 
Simultaneously, Lorraine senses something and sees a vision of Judy in the lake. She calls her mom to check on Judy, who is safe. The family then stays in a hotel. Later, Ed and Lorraine show the footage to a priest. The priest hesitates because the children aren't baptized and the family isn't part of the church, but after reviewing the evidence, he agrees to push it through. At the Warrens' house, Judy's locket moves along with Lorraine's. Judy wakes up and calls for her parents. Judy runs upstairs as the lights go out and calls for her grandma. Annabelle and the witch are in the room. Judy cries for her grandma again, who can't open the door. Lorraine and Ed arrive, and Ed knocks down the door. The chair swings and almost hits Judy. She says someone was rocking in the chair with Annabelle. Ed checks the doll, which is still in the box. Meanwhile, Roger returns to the motel, and the girls say Carolyn took Christine and April and left. Roger calls the Warrens, reporting Carolyn smelled like rotten meat. Lorraine predicts Carolyn will return to the house, so Ed tells Roger to meet him there. Drew drives Roger, and Ed reluctantly allows Lorraine to join. Brad arrives simultaneously and shoots the door open with a shotgun. They find Carolyn in the cellar, trying to kill Christine. They subdue her, but April disappears. Lorraine warns that the witch won't let Carolyn leave and will kill her if they try. The witch drags Carolyn back to the cellar. Drew leaves Christine in the van to search for April, while the rest stay with Carolyn. She bites Brad's face, but they restrain her. Ed prepares for the exorcism, urging Lorraine to leave. She refuses, fetching the Bible from the van. Drew can't find April. Lorraine returns, and Ed starts reading from the Bible, spraying Carolyn with holy water. She screams, shaking the cellar. Birds attack the van and house. The exorcism continues as Drew searches for April. He hears something under the kitchen floor and starts breaking it open. Meanwhile, Carolyn spits blood, and Roger wants them to stop, but Lorraine insists they're fighting for her soul. Ed commands the entity to reveal itself. It screams, shaking the house, then suddenly stops. The chair levitates, and Ed commands the entity to put her down. It tries to drop a cupboard on him, but he dodges. Roger pleads with the entity to release Carolyn, but it replies that she's already gone, and they will all die. Simultaneously, Drew finds April under the house and informs everyone. Carolyn hears him and goes after April. They chase Carolyn, but she finds April first. Suddenly, Ed calls the witch by her name, ordering her back to hell. Lorraine speaks directly to Carolyn, urging her not to hurt her child. Carolyn vomits out the witch. In the morning, Ed and Roger help Carolyn out of the house. Her bruises fade as she crosses into the sunlight, and she returns to her usual self. The Perrin family gathers in relief and joy, knowing the nightmare is over. The Warrens return home, placing the old music box from the Perrin house on a shelf. Lorraine and Ed share a moment of reflection before leaving the room. As the room falls silent, the music box plays on its own. The camera focuses on the music box's mirror, capturing the eerie atmosphere. The music stops, and the screen cuts to black, signaling the film's end. The credits roll, leaving the audience with a lingering sense of unease. Suggesting the Warren's battle against the supernatural is far from over. What are your thoughts on the film's story? Please share your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more captivating stories like this. See you in the next video.